Let's get back to that uh, overseas and developing overseas story. A ceasefire between Israel and Hamas has been announced after both sides have been pounded by rockets. And it's holding for now. But for how long? We've got Steve McDonald from the Center of uh, Israel and Jewish Affairs. Steve, great to see you this morning. Thanks for having me, Pat. I guess you've got to be pleased that this ceasefire is in place. Well, it is a relief. Over the past uh, week and a few days, we've witnessed, as you know, uh, a double war crime on the part of Hamas. On the one hand, Hamas has been uh, pummeling southern Israelis with more than 900 missiles and mortars, mm. uh, deliberately targeting civilians. On the other hand, Hamas has been hiding behind civilians in the Gaza Strip, using Palestinians as human shields. And so now uh, a ceasefire is an important first step in ending hostilities, but what's more important over the long term is for Hamas to determine that its interests lie not in trying to destroy the Jewish state, but rather trying to build up uh, the framework for a Palestinian state with a peaceful, prosperous society in Gaza. Do you think that can happen, given that you know, you've got Iran ostensibly behind all this action by Hamas? Well, it, you point to an important factor here. It's, it's a very uh, important test right now for Egypt to determine that uh, its territory, the Sinai Peninsula, is no longer used as a way station by Iran to uh, bring missiles, uh, advanced missiles, into Gaza. As we know, the long-range missiles that hit Tel Aviv and parts of Jerusalem this past week, uh, Iran itself has bragged as uh, providing the technology and the know-how to, to uh, militants in Gaza. And so you're right, it's, it's more important than ever that the international community hold Iran to its obligations to not uh, support terror in Gaza. Yeah, uh, here's my concern. They're sitting there, ceasefire uh, in place. They can reload. They can get restocked by whoever has supplied them in the past. Is that a concern? Well, I mean, it is a concern. It's happened in the past. Again, Egypt has a significant amount of responsibility to prevent that from happening. But the important uh, lesson from this past week is that technological capabilities, Israel's ability to target terror groups in Gaza is very strong. You know, Hamas is claiming that or has claimed over the past week that it hit an Israeli naval ship, that it downed an Israeli jet, that it hit uh, the Israeli parliament. All of this was fiction because Gazans were looking around and seeing Hamas taking a pummeling in, in, in the territory. 1,500 terror strikes were struck by the IDF. Uh, 30 top senior commanders in Islamic Jihad and Hamas were, were taken out. And Hamas has suffered a massive setback. It, it lost thousands of missiles before they could even be fired. And so uh, you're right, Israel probably can expect Hamas to rearm, but Hamas can expect Israel to not stand by uh, and allow uh, uh, breaking of the ceasefire to go uh, to go unabated. These people are zealots, as much as anything else Hamas is, and it wouldn't take much to, you know, one of these rogue um, uh, people to fire off a missile and then this thing all gets started again. How likely is that? Well, I mean, we're hopeful it's not likely in, in the short term. In the long term, it is quite likely. Israel does retain, and the United States has confirmed this in, in helping to oversee the ceasefire implementation. The, the state of Israel does retain the ability and the right to protect its citizens. If Israel does see terror, uh, terror plans being prepared in Gaza, if it does see an imminent attack, Israel retains the right to prevent that from happening. Okay, you talked about the role of Egypt. What's the role of the United States? I mean, Hillary Clinton went over there, was involved in the talks. What further role might they have to play? Well, first and foremost, the United States has an incredible amount of influence over the Egyptians. The United States provides billions every year in direct support for, for the government of Egypt. And therefore, Egypt has a vested interest in ensuring that uh, the United States' interests are more or less reflected in how Egypt behaves in the Sinai. And so I think that the United States, uh, not only in terms of pressuring Egypt to uphold its end of, end of, this, of this whole deal, uh, the United States plays an important role as a, as a moral force in the world. You know, the United States was part of an international coalition this past week that ardently defended Israel's right to defend itself. You know, the, the governments of Australia, the government of Canada, as we know, the governments of the UK, the Netherlands, Germany, all came out and put the blame for this squarely on, in the hands of Hamas. And so when the United States and Canada come out and take a moral stand along these lines, I think it, it helps ensure that the UN and other international bodies are not abused by the Palestinians as a, an outlet to demonize Israel and prevent Israel from exercising its legitimate self-defense right, uh, self -defense rights. Steve, we'll see how it plays out. Thanks very for much, sure. though, for your time today. Thanks. Steve McDonald from the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs.